Coming up, we've got details about Chase Elliott making his sprint car debut, more dirt starts for Kyle Larson, and we take a look at the 2022 World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series schedule and more. Today is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. I'm not sure how this was the case, but news about Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott sort of flew under the radar yesterday. I retweeted the release from PJ Peterson, but it looks like a lot of the NASCAR media didn't catch on about this until this morning. Merced Speedway out in California is hosting a big racing weekend, November 23rd and 24th, that features 360 sprint cars and the USAC National Midgets, and both Larson and Elliott will be in attendance. Larson has already entered the Hangtown 100 USAC Midget event the weekend before and will compete in his own midget at Merced as well. He'll also be behind the wheel of the Works Limited 57 Sprint Car with Paul Silva competing in the Sprint Car portion of the event. The Works Limited car is owned by Kevin Kozlowski but is pretty much identical to the 57 owned by Silva that Larson normally races. As for Elliott, he's made various dirt racing starts this season, including in a midget and a dirt late model, but he will be making his sprint car debut at Merced, driving the Tarleton 21 machine. Tarleton has been supporting Larson's racing efforts lately, including an associate deal and a primary race on his Hendrick Motorsports 5 car. So it's not surprising that Elliott will make his debut with Tarleton kind of through that Hendrick connection. The famously blacked out 2021 20, uh, machine has had Ryan Bernal behind the wheel in recent weeks, including at Trophy Cup and the most recent King of the West races. Parker Price Miller, Corey Day, and Austin McCarl have all also raced the 21 this season. If you're Elliot, it's the perfect opportunity to get your feet wet in a sprint car, established team at a track they know with Larson there to coach you. I love seeing the interest in dirt racing from Elliot, and it will certainly be a boost to that event to have both drivers in attendance. Continuing to blur the lines between pavement and dirt and between Saturday nights and Sunday afternoons is key to the continued health of motorsports in this country. Because it's a USAC event, if you can't get out to Merced, you will be able to watch the event over on Flow Racing. If you'd like more details about Merced Speedway, check out my past conversations episode with track general manager Doug Lockwood. Doug used to be the race director for the World of Outlaws and has been running Merced for the past few years. He's a super good guy who's done some cool stuff at that racetrack. The 2021 World of Outlaws Sprint Car season is set to close out this week at World Finals, but focus is already starting to shift towards 2022 with the announcement of the series schedule for next season. As is customary, the year will start in February at Volusia Speedway Park for Dirt Car Nationals and close out in early November at Charlotte for World Finals. In between are all the traditional favorites, including the Knoxville Nationals in August, the Kings Royal at Eldora, the National Open at Williams Grove, and those two West Coast trips. In between, though, are some new dates at some different tracks and some notable events left out of the schedule. If you go back and find these schedule announcements from recent seasons on social media, you see all of the same complaints every single year. How come XYZ track didn't get a date? One of the outlaws going to come to their senses, blah, blah, blah. You can damn near set your watch to the regularity of these types of comments. But unfortunately, with so many dirt tracks across the country, there will always end up being folks disappointed when the Outlaw schedule drops. The notable dropped track this season that a lot of people have commented about in the last 24 hours is Lernerville. But if you're a regular consumer of this show, I told you back in September that this was going to be a real possibility. When the track ownership group swapped the Firecracker late model weekend from Outlaw Sanction to Lucas, it put WRG in a difficult situation with Lernerville going forward. Continuing to bring the Sprint Car Series to a track that dropped their late model sanction for a Crown Jewel event was just going to be really unlikely. And that is exactly what has transpired. Events like the Silver Cup and Commonwealth Clash at Lernerville will probably still happen, but they'll just end up either being unsanctioned or they'll flip to something like maybe being all-star events. Also, the Ohio fans are yet again upset that Wayne County isn't getting a date, but there will still be plenty of times to see the Outlaws in Ohio in 2022 with stops at Eldora, Attica, Sharon, and now Atomic. Other notable uh, changes on the schedule include the addition of Bakersfield in the spring, Vado, uh, Vado Speedway Park in March, Tri-City is back for the first time since 2008, and Port Royal gets a second event, this one in July. The Jackson Nationals are moving from June to the week after the Knoxville Nationals, creating a massive two weeks of racing in the Midwest, a lot of money on the line there. 
And Husits has added a three-day 100,000 to win event later in June, calling it the Husits High Banks Nationals. And Bristol is back in April for a three-day event that will feature both the sprint cars and late models. And along with the new schedule, the Outlaws have announced big additions to the series points fund. The 2022 champion will take down $200,000, which is a $50,000 increase from 2021. And then every position through the field will see at least a 33% increase in payout with more than $350,000 being added through the field and upwards of a million dollars being paid out. So big shows, added dates, and more money than ever will be on the line for the Outlaws in 2022. I'm not going to go line by line here, but if you want to see the full schedule, it's actually on the screen if you're watching it on YouTube, but uh, you can also visit waterofoutlaws.com to see the full slate. Drop me a comment below. Let me know your initial thoughts about next year's schedule. What do you like? What do you not like? Uh, Let me know below. In a bit of sprint car team news from yesterday, Brent Marks announced a change to his organization for the future. Alan Murray, who has sponsored Marks through his Texas-based company, M&M Painting and Construction, is joining Marks as a part owner of his race team. Murray Marks Motorsports is officially debuting this week at Cherokee Speedway and World Finals with a new paint scheme on the 19 machine. According to a piece from Jerry, uh, Jeremy Elliott at SprintCarUnlimited.com, this deal has been in the works since Marks departed the CJB ride earlier in the season. 2021 turned into a very strong year for Marks once he got his own car rolling again. He ended up with 11 wins, including two with the Outlaws, one at Eldora in May and one at Williams Grove in July. In 35 appearances in 2021 with the Outlaws, Marks had 10 top fives and 20 top tens with an average finish of 8.6, which was a career best for the driver who was actually previously an Outlaw regular. I was kind of hoping this announcement would mean that Marks would be back full time with a series like the Outlaws, but it seems as though it will be status quo next season with Marks running a pick and choose schedule centered around central Pennsylvania. Murray mentioned the added costs and difficulties finding crew guys as reasons they don't want to run with the Outlaws next season. Those are certainly both incredibly valid reasons. Hopefully, though, we'll see Mark's challenge for a championship with the series in the future as his continued improvement is evident. And I think he's a guy you could definitely see being a contender for a championship with the Outlaws or All-Stars. If you'd like to see more about this, go find Jeremy Story or Kyle McFadden's over at SpeedSport. On the heels of last week's Carolina Midget Showdown at Millbridge, the racing continues this week with the Carolina Micro Showdown. The event takes place tonight and tomorrow for 600 non-wing micros. The field will be big with some serious talent in the mix. They had 60 cars in attendance last night for a practice night, and Buddy Kofoid topped the sheet. Ryan Timms is here, as is Christopher Bell, guys like Joby Miller, and NASCAR drivers Brett Moffat and my guy Sheldon Creed. Tonight's racing program includes qualifying heats and some of the lower mains with things progressing tomorrow towards a 10,000 to win main event. If you're in town for world finals at Charlotte, Millbridge certainly isn't far away. And if you can't be there, you can watch all of the action live on Dervision. We'll keep you updated on the happenings on this show over the next two days. There are three shows on the streaming schedule today. Dirtvision has that first night of the Carolina Micro Showdown at Millbridge Speedway. Flow Racing has Flow 24-7. And then Speedsport has the prelude to the finals event at Cherokee Speedway. That event at Cherokee Speedway is kind of uh, piggybacking off of World Finals this week. 410 Sprint Cars, Super Late Models, and Big Block Modifieds on the card tonight at Cherokee. Not quite sure about who's going to be there. They've tweeted out a few names, possibly Brent Marks uh, and some other guys. But We'll have to kind of see what that roster looks like tonight at Cherokee. uh, See if some of those teams that are going to be racing at World Finals are going to come down early to race. Uh, If you want to see that full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.